a lot of people say that they really want their sales team to thrive. And you know, there's a difference between interested and committed. Many people are interested in having a sales team th thrive. Mm -hmm. But interested people do what's convenient, committed people do whatever it takes. And quite frankly, most organizations aren't ready for it. But those that are, it's an amazing journey. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Today we have... Chris Young. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! I got a little bit of laryngitis here today. So <laughs> I'm not quite able <laughs> to solo. bring that out. Flew I, solo. I, I knew that ahead of time. I knew that ahead of time. So. Guys, this is episode 98 uh, of the Sales Wolves podcast, and I'm extremely excited to have Chris here uh, because really... It was through conversations with Chris that I think the sales was, was even thought of. The concept, um, yeah. It was really the first time I had ever heard of the concept of a sales wolves was in conversations with him you know, over two, two and a half years ago. Um, so what we wanted to do in this episode was just kind of talk about that and kind of bring it back to the very, very beginning of why we did this podcast, which is based around this idea of what a sales wolf is. And um, Chris is someone that I respect tremendously and has spent a tremendous amount of time learning what a sales wolf is, being able to identify them because he is one. And he probably knows better than anyone I've ever come across um, really the very granular detail of what a sales, how a sales wolf thinks, yep. their behaviors, their motivators, and really how to take them and put them in a situation where they can excel. Exactly. And so let's let's just talk about it from the very beginning. So in your definition, what is a sales wolf? It's a, a human being, a person who has the hard-coded and the soft-coded mindset to excel, being a top 20 percentile in a particular sales role. So there can actually be different versions of a sales wolf. Okay. It's like if you saw a wolf out in the wild, different parts of the world would have sure. a different, little bit of a different version of that mm -hmm. wolf. Different types of sales require a different type of personality to rock that sale. And what we should do before this, because that was probably the rudest intro ever that I could ever give, is why don't you tell everybody who you oh, are, who where you're from. What do I want? <laughs> I should probably do that. I mean, it's only episode 98, like Jesus. Well, we've we known each other for some time, so we kind of take yeah, it for so granted. For everybody else, yeah. uh, tell them kind of where you're from and, and what you do. Well, I'm from Bismarck, North Dakota. I lived a few different places across the United States. I've got a master's and undergrad in economics uh, from North Dakota State University. And uh, I'm a recovering commodity trader. I'm one of those people that I've always studied, you know, when I, when I lose, why do I lose? I hate losing like you, Tyler. Mm. I hate losing almost more than I love winning. Mm. And uh, uh, Rainmaker Group was born in 2001 out of frustration. And the frustration was, how do we help uh, design, build sales teams that sell? I, I've been in that role where you hire salespeople and, and maybe half of them work out for a little bit and then over time they flesh out. And uh, I started doing the research and I found different assessments and started feeling a number of assessment tools. And uh, our company, the Rainmaker Group, we've been continuously refining the process of identifying top sales talent. But not just identifying top sales talent, the selection, the hiring, the coaching, you know, basically the care, the onboarding, the development of, of top, top salespeople. It's rare that you find someone who's truly just this perfect, perfect sure. fit. So every salesperson, when you bring them on, they need coaching. They need yeah. encouragement. And we've developed a process that enables us to help our clients customize that approach, make sure they're bringing them on the right people in the first place, mm -hmm. and then take care of them the right way. And I would think in taking care of them the right way, a big part of that with sales wolves is retaining sales wolves. Absolutely. Because it's one thing to... <laughs> kind of think of capturing a wolf in the wild, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, but it is. It's like it's one thing to be able to to find one, but it's another to be able to keep one long term because Absolutely. they are sales wolves, so they're highly focused, they're highly driven, highly motivated, and they're always looking for the next they're insatiable. the next big goal that they can go take Absolutely. take over. So you put them in a scenario where you give them the ability to go succeed, they go succeed, and then they're gonna want to know what's next, what's next, what's next. They're always looking higher. So being able to figure out ways to retain and what, have, what are some of those strategies that you've seen uh, work in, in being able to keep sales wolves um, occupied? Keep them occupied? Keep them happy. 
Well, depending on the role, um, I would say probably three things. First of all, they want to work for a sales wolf manager. I mean, we've, you and I have worked for different managers over the past. I, I've had two where I actually, within six months of working for them, I reported to their boss because yeah. they drove me crazy. Yep. They didn't think, and I'm not trying to say my level's better, but I just think at a, at a level that is constitutionally dissatisfied, I hate losing, I'm always looking for that better way. And not everyone thinks that way. When, you work for, when a sales wolf works for a manager, who doesn't think that way, it'll drive them crazy, mm. okay? Another, uh, the, another level would be compensation, taking care of them the way that they wanna be taken care of. The truth is, is kind of thinking about Pareto optimality, 80% of all sales come from where? They come from 20% mm. of your sales team. That's not an accident, that's just yeah. a, it's a universal truth. So in English, you've got 80% of your results coming from 20% of your salespeople those salespeople are cross-subsidizing your low performers. Mm. And when they start figuring this out, they get upset about it. Mm. Now, when you have a sales wolf manager, they don't put up with that that much, right? The other thing is, is, is uh, number three, is sales wolves want to be challenged. Yeah. Okay, they want bigger and better things, and, and they are seeking that. And, and quite frankly, sales wolves will often have a lifespan with a particular company. That's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes they'll come back, especially, I'll say this, especially if sales wolves will leave for greener pastures, but if they can't find a sales wolf manager, they will often come back. So you wanna mm -hmm. make sure that when your sales wolves leave, that they leave with the basically the best of circumstances, yeah. because they'll often come back and hunt with you. Huh. So this conversation is usually built around you know, entrepreneurs, but do you believe that sales wolves are born or can someone That's learn or be trained to become a sales wolf? We've been studying this for years, as I've said, and parts of the personality, and you know, we measure four components, but two of them in particular are very interesting. The behavioral style, we're born with that. Nature, God, the universe, gives you that when you are born. And I've got two kids and behaviorally, they're night and day. Mm -hmm. um, raise them similarly. So yeah. they're, they're not, both of them are really not behaviorally driven to be salespeople. Motivators now, that can grow the, uh, the nurture piece over life, mentors, circumstances, economics, surroundings, the country you live in, that can make people hungry. Okay. okay? If you come from, so what we find, uh, some, sometimes the best salespeople come from situations when they were young where they, they had to fight, they had to work. They had to, at a young age, seven or eight, they had to, in my, in my case, uh, sell newspapers, yeah. you know, so, sell garbage bags, stuff yeah. like that. Um, there's a pattern there, okay? So uh, behaviors baked in at birth, motivators, they develop over time. But you, as a manager, you're not going to influence that. Mm -hmm. You will not influence that. You're, it is not possible to shape that, hmm. okay? That is hard-coded. That's why we use the word hard-coded. It's yep. hard-coded. Now, the part that can be shaped is if you have a hard-coded mindset where you've got that personality that drives sales in the first mm -hmm. place and the background could be the experience, education, you know, etc. Now, the soft-coded mindset is it's the mojo. So when yep. you hear me talk about mojo, it's basically um, am I accountable, personally mm -hmm. accountable? Do I use my word against myself? You know, good sales wolves know that they are harder on themselves than anyone else will be, yep. and they avoid at all costs using a word against themselves. Because mm -hmm. what, what we notice about sales wolves is, is they, they, we call them porpoising, where if you think yep. like the water line, porpoise is in and out of the water. That's mm -hmm. you know, a prox or a metaphor for our sales performance. We notice that, that sales wolves who are not in tune with their mojo, what shapes it, what drags them down, what gives them energy, they'll be up, they'll be down, they'll be up, they'll be down. So one last comment. Sales wolf managers know this because they have that same challenge. And sales wolf managers learn how to maximize. They learn how to get in front of that negative mojo when it occurs. Mm -hmm. And they learn how to accelerate the positive mojo when it occurs. So what's a, an example of a sales wolf that over your career that you've identified uh -huh. that was in a position that clearly wasn't oh, yeah. utilizing their natural skills and abilities. Oh, that's, we, we got several, <laughs> but I, I'm gonna share my favorite. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I, I shared it with you recently and it almost brings tears to my eyes because um, we found, so backing up, when we use our assessments because human beings are biased and it's really tough to, yep. to objectively identify talent. Okay, when someone says, I know good talent, I'll tell you what, I know good talent. I've been around sales wolves all my life. 
and I know that my biases get lit up when I, I meet someone who came from the same background. I like them more. Sure. They like fishing. I like them more. Yep. You know, they have a similar lifestyle, etc. I like them more. But we've come to understand you trust the data, you trust the assessment. So we make sure that um, uh, that we we absolutely trust the data. So when we go on into a client situation, quite often we'll, it's not uncommon for us to say, "Hey, let's assess the entire." organization mm -hmm. and the response is always you mean the sales team them too those people too <laughs> but everybody yeah and so a, a case uh, example in Indiana we assessed um, several people who voluntarily wanted to be assessed once we made it known on the welding and production line and uh, true story uh, I can I, I talk with this guy periodically um, this gentleman was a welder and they brought him in <laughs> they brought him in and said, we'll give you a chance. This Rainmaker guy said, you know, you, you've got the chops. Not only do you have the chops, I mean, he totally yanked the curve. I mean, <laughs> he awesome. set the tone. He was dying for that chance, Yeah. right? Now, yeah. fast forward now, he's on to a different company where he is one of two regional vice presidents. He's got his own sales team under him. You know how many salespeople out there who, who just didn't know that they have that capacity? Yeah. There, is, there are many, many, mm -hmm. many many opportunities to find quality which, talent which goes back to what you're saying before that some of those some of those god-given born yeah. uh, characteristics that just weren't being that weren't being given the right vehicle exactly basically to exactly to, that's, man that's that's absolutely incredible um i think it's <laughs> this could be selfish but i think it's important for people that watch the sales Wolves podcast <clears throat> To hear an expert opinion, give them <laughs> your feedback on myself and Joseph. Are we sales wolves? Yes. Like, do do we have credibility to be sitting here howling on well, on camera and howling I'm into iTunes, lie. Spotify, wherever yeah. people are seeing this? I know. <laughs> okay, you're not you're not the typical sales wolf because a typical sales wolf is at a twenty percentile, but you're you're in that five percent. <laughs> 5%, I mean, I, I wish I, uh, we don't have the time to yeah. educate everybody sure. on what that looks yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, your, your profile absolutely lights it up. I mean, light, <laughs> I just, lights it up. I just felt like it was important. On every just, to, front. just at least to put that out yeah. there. So yeah, that you people have a know right that, to howl. That the sales so, so podcast Joseph. is not being written but no. not being uh, ran by a bunch of sheep. Well, it's not being <laughs> our posers. Yeah, yeah, sheep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's not being it's not being uh, produced by uh, posers. You know, posers drive Good. me crazy. Good to know, especially if they know they're posers. I'm glad I had to ask for that. Um, <laughs> now that that's out of the way. <laughs> now that that's out of the way. No, but what's what's some advice that you would give um, to people um, that maybe their organization hasn't gone through this process? Maybe they're wondering themselves, like, I wonder when I'm. Yeah, I wonder if I'm a sales wolf. Like, yeah. what, what advice would you? Um, give them to at least start figuring out like a little bit more about themselves? Well, on, on themselves, and you know, we have a sample, if you go to our website, the Rainmaker Group, yeah. uh, Inc. .com, okay. the Rainmaker Group Inc. .com. You can check us out there and we do have a sample link there that you can complete your own sample assessment. Um, now at the organizational level, uh, and by the way, we'll, of course, we'll send out the results and uh, you can read them. Uh, the, at the organizational level, it can be really a painful thing. I'll, I'll tell you something. I bet. A lot of people say that they really want their sales team to thrive. And you know, there's a difference between interested and committed. Many people are interested in having a sales team thrive. Mm -hmm. But interested people do what's convenient. Committed people do whatever it takes. And quite frankly, most organizations aren't ready for it. But those that are, it's an amazing journey. Yeah. Because we can help give people, uh, we can give uh, managers, we can give uh, CEOs, we can give them Clarity, clarity. And, and help them honor the greatness in their sales, mm -hmm. sales people and their sales wolves. Um, it, it's a powerful, powerful journey and powerful process. And best yet, you can always align your, your future uh, hirings, your, your mm -hmm. future, future selection to make sure that you're bringing on the best talent. But I would be bringing them on selection, hiring, onboarding, and coaching. There's an entire, you know, the whole life cycle of that salesperson. I think salespeople are starving to death. And, and this is an epidemic across the world. Yeah. USA, where people are going to work and not, not bringing their whole selves to it, mm -hmm. and it's because there's a disconnect between the job, there's a disconnect between the manager, there's friction, yep. there's a, the story in the, their own mind. These tools help provide clarity, mm -hmm. and with good management, they can really unleash potential. Some of the biggest things, to your point, um, that I learned about myself, because when I went through this process with the, your assessments, yeah. 
it, to me, it was like this light bulb went off. I'm like, holy crap. I'm like, everyone's been talking about self-awareness and they've been talking about, you know, where do, how do I get it? Yeah. And like, oh, okay, I just read this and now I know so much more about myself. Yep. Um, and so for me, it was, it was just eye-opening in the fact that managers are managing people based on their own personalities yeah. and their own motivators and their, their own, own biases. Behaviors. Yep. But everyone is so unique. And that's one thing I like about this process just in general of going through these assessments is that it's not that one assessment result is better than the other. It's celebrating who you are. The uniqueness like, of each person. There, you yeah. may not be a sales wolf perfectly to a T, yeah. but there's something about your, um, your profile that makes you uniquely you and makes you incredible in something. Yeah. And it's yeah. figuring out what that is. Like that's, that's what makes it to where you get up in the morning and you go do what you're doing and you're motivated in the right way and you're being put in the right environment and you're being yeah. communicated the right way. Like some of these, the details that these assessments get down to with like, like how to com best communicate me, how yeah. to worst, what's the worst way to communicate with exactly. me? How to best man, you know, the best environment for me to work in, the worst environment for me to work in. If you exactly. can get yourself into a position where you're giving yourself at least, um, the the biggest um, you know opportunity to succeed exactly that to me is is what's so like magical about this stuff magic. because when you think about the fact that it, I mean, awareness it's, is magic it's it is it's 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 the awareness and it's knowing that it's not just some um, subjective you know ask five people that you're closest with to tell you the truth which they're not going to no. it's still going to be biased they're still going to tell you what you want to hear yeah. but that you can actually find out like science based evidence based statistical like whatever you want to whatever you know wrapper you want to put around it but yep. to know that like this is me and when you read it it's like reading an autobiography. Like, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Freaky. It's freaky accurate. I remember when we did these assessments uh, Nathan um, he was reading through his he's like He's like, I don't think this thing's right. He's like, yeah. He's like, I don't know. He was like, well, you know, what about it? He started like going through. He's like, well, it said this and this, and I mean, that's just that's just not me. And we're all like, dude, that's exactly you. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That's you to a T. And he's like, really? Sometimes you got to go through that. <laughs> yeah, but it was so cool to to kind of see that um, play out. Um, so yeah, I mean, I I'm extremely grateful because um, it really is like. I remember when I told you that saleswolves.com that we were able to get that and you were like, mm -hmm. crap. <laughs> yeah, should have, jumped, should have jumped on it. Should have jumped on it. But I mean, it. it really was like it opened our eyes to this idea of like what a sales wolf uh, really is yeah. and and the fact that it's um, something that we wanted to try to you know, figure out any possible way that we could find. And, and I think yeah. with this podcast, um, one thing that we focus on is that it's not necessarily just for salespeople. Yeah. But that every single person is is selling themselves, yep. either selling themselves, like, in a sales aspect where that's their job, selling themselves to other people in whatever other job that they have, influencing others as sales, or selling themselves to do the things that they're supposed to do on a daily basis. Yep. Like you're constantly selling your you know kid to eat vegetables when they don't want to eat vegetables. Like, Banner. the whole world is based around the sales. ability to influence and impact others uh, and that's Absolutely. sales and and if you can find ways to figure out how you do that best and how you operate then it's always gonna always gonna make an impact absolutely so any final words on on sales wolves i'd say find them love them hmm. cherish them nurture them nurture <laughs> them create awareness in them yeah awesome. they're, they're out there they're out there and Absolutely. they're looking for homes well, good deal. Well, probably some of you that are listening to this right now are one, and we appreciate you, and we appreciate those that may not have any idea, and we would challenge you to look into some of these um, assessments. Um, have your organization look into uh, identifying, because you want to make sure that you're being managed, uh, and that you're being motivated, and you're being led um, yep. in the yep. most advantageous way for you to ultimately uh, reach your full potential. Uh, so with that, guys, this is episode 98 of the Sales Wolves podcast. Away. Again, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Chris Young. And we are the Sales Wolves. Uh, oh, I'm not even going to try. I didn't get it out. <laughs> <laughs>